Shortly after daybreak on Wednesday, April 3rd, 1861, an armed federal posse pounded on the door of an African-American family in the city of Chicago. There was a brief struggle amid frantic cries of kidnapper, but the men quickly subdued the father, Onesimus Harris, along with his wife, Anne, and their two young children, George, age four, and Charles, age one. The Harrises were living temporarily with Anne's mother in a three-story house on South Clark Street. It was less than two weeks before the start of the Civil War, and the Harris family were freedom seekers who had just recently escaped from outside of St. Louis, Missouri. They had fled slavery because their master had died, and they were being threatened with sale and family separation. Now they were also under arrest. This sad story marked the last time that the federal government enforced the Fugitive Slave Law in the city of Chicago. The 1850 Fugitive Slave Law was bitterly controversial, especially hated in free cities like Chicago. That is why the federal officials who seized the Harris family almost immediately dragged them onto a private train and rushed them down to Springfield, Illinois. Springfield was the state capital, still free territory but much closer to St. Louis, and a place where white people were more evenly divided in their opinions about slavery. It was also where Abraham Lincoln had lived until just about a month earlier when he had left town to become president. The fugitive slave commissioner in Springfield was a man named Stephen Cornell. He was an old friend of Lincoln's, but Cornell was no friend to freedom seekers. After the Harris family had run away in March, the widow of their former master and her son-in-law approached Cornell for help. The commissioner then issued a warrant and the federal marshal in Chicago, who was new to his job and opposed to slavery, brought the Harrises down to Springfield, complaining afterwards that it was his painful duty to obey the law. By Thursday, April 4th, after a sham hearing, the Harris family was found guilty of running away, and all of them got hauled back across the Mississippi River. By August, the breakup of their family was complete. Anne and the children were sold away for just over $1,500. Nobody knows what else happened to them or to Onesimus Harris. Back in Chicago, there was widespread outrage. Free black residents had protested the arrest, and some began to flee the city, fearing for their own lives. On Sunday, April 7th, reportedly over 100 African Americans boarded trains for Canada. Newspapers called it a great stampede. There was no comment from the Lincoln administration, but many observers believed that they were trying to show Southerners how they would support the Constitution, despite their Republican Party's anti-slavery beliefs. If so, it did not matter. Less than a week later, the Civil War began. More important, just over four years later, slavery was abolished, and Onesimus, if he was still alive, finally became a free man.